Only one boycott and the whole zoo is vibrating. Biafra is coming. Because when we started this journey many years ago, I told you that we are unstoppable. I said it. We've lost men and women, but this march is relentless. We continue until Biafra comes. And as I say always, if Biafra doesn't come, then there is no God in heaven. That is why we must remember a resolute. But this evening, let's preach this gospel. Then afterwards, we sit down as a family and then interact. Thank you very much for coming. Good evening, wonderful people of Biafra, wherever you are, I welcome you, but especially those of you in London. It is an honor and a privilege for me to be here addressing you this evening and the entirety of humanity as well. I am humbled and I am also filled with pride and joy. We must broadcast because um, our coordinator here in London is like I have prayed because the world is waiting, they want to hear from us. We said we are going to boycott and we are going to boycott these very elections coming up on Saturday. That the world may know how serious we are. There was a time I never felt I'll be in London. I thought I was going to perhaps die in this very process. But it wouldn't have bothered me because if you ask those that arrested me, they will tell you that I was defiant from the beginning right to the very end. Because that is my nature, that is who I am. I said that I will remain without fear from my enemies and I did that. And will continue to do so. I promised the zoo that in the not too distant future, I shall return to Biafra land as I told them in 2015 and I did. And this time around as I also promised them I will be going with hell. Let nobody have any doubt about this because Biafra must come. I don't care if we are all dead, there's only one man and one woman left. Let them continue to have a new generation of Biafras. One thing is paramount that Biafra must come in our time. The worst mistake that PDP ever did was to allow the ERAS to attack IPOB. Anything that happens to them tonight is entirely their own making. We'll be sending a very clear message, unmistakable to anybody who dares to attempt to denigrate IPOB. We will completely and totally destroy that very person and that very entity. Zoo tried and we defeated them. Asadok tried, we, we brought them down. So did Lai Muhammad's Minister of Information. Ohanese is on the floor. So also are those Igbo saboteurs in Abuja and in Lagos. For PDP to try to attack IPOB, they have signed their death warrant. When I attack APC, they say I work for PDP. I attack PDP, they say I work for APC. Anything we do, they have difficulties with it. But we are going to teach them a lesson they will never ever forget. Last week, if you all recall, I was in our studios here in London. I made a broadcast 
and I said that I want a referendum. The same referendum that allowed Atiku Abubakar to become a Nigerian citizen via place beside was the same thing that Ndam Dekano wants for the people of Biafra. Some very hopeless individuals within the zoo journalism decided to write rubbish to insinuate what I never said in the first place. And they felt that their best line of defense is to attack IPOB and to attack myself. So before we proceed this very evening, I want to tell the whole world where Atiku Abubak actually comes from. And I won't do it myself, because if I do it, the world will think maybe I have an agenda. I like Atiku Abubak, I think he's a gentleman. But the rats he surrounds himself with are not worthy. Because if they were, they wouldn't have dared attack IDAB. If you have a smartphone with you here, please put it on silent. And then, where do we have that static? I want you to go to your Google and type in referendum 1961 Nigeria. Simple assignment that those e rats couldn't do. Very simple assignment. Can those at the back hear me? I want you all, please, anybody that gets it should please raise his or her hand and tell us precisely what is written. 1961 Nigeria referendum, please, if you have it. Has anyone come across it? Just go to Google. And as I'm saying this, I hope that the E-Rats that works for PDP are also listening and that they're doing this very simple assignment as well. Go to Google, you type in referendum 1961 Nigeria. Have you got it? Can please take, somebody take the microphone to him. You can come closer. Tell me precisely what it says. Please. Is it this one? Give it to him. Will the world hear us when he speaks? Will they hear us? Come closer, please. Can you come around this way, please, if you may? Can you use that one? No, bring the bring this cable, please. I think it is all the way here. There you go. We want to teach the zoo what they do not know nor understand. Here on Radio Biafra, anything I say is gospel before heaven and before mankind on earth. After this, I will deal with Jibreel comprehensively and totally that the world may know that Nigeria is indeed a zoo full of animals. Please tell me what it says when you Googled referendum 1961 Nigeria, please. Referencing from uh, Wikipedia. Yes. 1961 British Cameroons referendum. Stop. British what? Cameroons. Did it say British Nigeria? No. Proceed, please. A referendum was held in British Cameroons on 11th February 1961 to determine whether the territory should join neighboring Cameroon or Nigeria. The option of independence having been opposed by Andrew Cohen, the UK representative to the United Nations, Trust Ship Council. It was not presented as an option. Ultimately, the Muslim majority Northern Cameroons saw a majority of 60% in favor of joining Nigeria. Is it very clear now? Are you confused? When was Atiku born? Google it again. Tell me the date he was born. And where he was born is very important. Where is the birthplace of Atiku Abubakar? Please find it for me on Google.
find it for me. I don't want to say anything myself. I want us to do our research this evening. All hell Biafra. Atiku Abubakar, GCON, born 25th November 1946, is a Nigerian politician. Stop. Was born in 1946. When did they join Nigeria? Was Atiku therefore born a Nigerian? Not at all. Then he shouldn't be contested for the presidency. <laughs> EDPE rats got Atiku into trouble, not me. They attacked IBUB, and that's the worst thing any idiot can do on earth. Because we come after you with everything we've got. I mean everything. At the end of the process, you'll be sunk, never to rise again. Look at John D. Rani, how we deal with them. This is a divine project ordained by heaven. No man can stop this. No human being born of a woman can stop IBUB. It's impossible. Where does Atiku come from? Cameroon. Where was he born? Cameroon. Can anybody born outside Nigeria contest for the presidency? Not at all. Oh. Oh, see a table out. I told them. I warned them. Thank you very much. We must proceed. Our boycott is not against anybody. I asked for a boycott in 2014, before 2015 elections. As at that time, Atiku left Jonathan, our brother, to go and campaign for his own brother, who is a Fulani man, Buhari. Do you know Atiku was in, AP, in PDP? Are you aware he was in PDP? Vice president in PDP? And he decamped to APC. Now you're asking IPOB to re-elect him. Uche, did we not boycott elections in 2015? What makes you think that I, Namde Khan, will ask this very wonderful army of heaven, IPOB, to vote in 2019 with nothing? I gave them my conditions. If they don't accede to my demands, I'll publish it on Friday, that the world may know what we're asking for. If they sign it, then I'll call off the boycott. If they don't sign it, we proceed full steam ahead. Because our priority is Biafra, nothing more, nothing less. I am not asking for anything else in life. All I want to see is Biafra. After that, then I can die. For those talking nonsense about us, on Thursday, I will bury what is left of Jibril Aminu al Sudan. I will have a world press conference here in London and I will ask sensible white people if that thing there is the dead Buhari or not. All of you know that Buhari is dead. Everybody knows that. Very well. But because they don't want IPOB to have the credit for it. That is why they all ganged up, conspired the Yoruba media, the same PDP. They know Buhari is dead, but they don't want to talk about it. Why? Because they know if they do, the zoo will collapse and Biafra will come. So they don't want it. They went back and ganged up amongst themselves to say right hand is Fulani, left hand is Fulani. And I kept wondering, can't any other ethnicity produce the president in the zoo? Why always Fulani? And to make matters worse, this is not the first time, not the second, not the third time. You have two Fulani men as the front runners for the seat. Let me ask you a very simple question. What has the Fulani ever done for Nigeria before? Somebody should please tell me. What have they done? Do they have engineers? Do they have poets? Do they have writers? Do they have philosophers? What do they have? Somebody please tell me why a Fulani man will deliver me. When you're asking somebody to help you out of a problem, 
You look at their track record. What they have done in the past and what they are likely to do in the future. I want somebody to please tell me what national problem in the zoo that a full man solved before. Just tell me one. I never heard of austerity measure in my life until Shagari was in power. Some of you perhaps are too young to remember. They started with something called austerity measure. Babangida came and introduced his own structural adjustment program called SAP. All they bring is hardship and poverty because they are the rest of ideas. They are not blessed with government. It's only in the zoo called Nigeria that Fulani holds way. Every other sensible country in Africa, none of them will ever allow a Fulani to ascend to the throne of leadership. They are messing about with all of us. And I was reading what some of these people, some of them in Lagos. Some of them. The way some young Igbo people are fighting for two Fulani men, they cannot do it for more. It's more, I'm not contesting. IPOB is their problem because we preach the truth. Because we'll tell them the truth that nobody will dare tell them. I tweeted earlier today. I know you're a bad person, incidentally, has never answered that question. Tinkan Ireland is working. Papa Wolf is working as the only two viable sea ports in the whole of the zoo called Nigeria. Now, let us, for instance, say we shut down Tinkan and Papa Wolf and move the business to Calaban to Ugocha. Do you think Yoruba will be in Nigeria? Will that be in Nigeria? Then why are our people supporting such nonsense? Why are they supporting it? I remember when I was telling him I'm what the world is to be for. He didn't listen to me. He went to Ubiano and planned Operation Pattern Dance. They should come and kill me. Wodo was overheard boasting that he would divide IPV. And I asked somebody to tell him. I sent somebody to him to tell him to remember the way we greet in IPOB. We say IPOB one family. We did not, we never ever reply two families or three or four. I said to the person that if Modo succeeds in dividing IPOB, I will relinquish my leadership position because nobody can try it. Today, which organization is divided? And incidentally, when I came out of prison and was um, holding rallies all across Biafra land, the first man to call for my arrest because of the number of crowd that come out to see me wherever I go to, he died two days ago. Watch and see what will happen to everybody opposed to IPOB and to Biafra. What shall become of them? I thought they said an number election boycott didn't work. Is that what they said? Then leave us now to boycott this one. Since it didn't work. We must know one thing and one thing for sure. That we are on the right track. The enemies will try to distract some of you. I have seen them all, one after the other. If you do, if you do right, they say, one did you do left? You do left, they say, oh, why not right? If zoo is a place where people reason and function properly, they have between now and Friday to amend their constitution, to allow, should I say, a naturalized, Atiku to perhaps still remain in the race. If Atiku goes into elections on Saturday and wins, 
he'll be impeached from office because he was not born a Nigerian. That's a very simple fact. That is what the funniest thing about Fulan is that they never ever obey the law. Before Buhari died, did he have any certificate? But they allowed him to contest. The same of Western Journal telling you, oh, vote for Atiku, was the same man that said, oh, why it doesn't matter. After all, he went to moms and all the short and heaven knows where else. They subvert their own laws that they make. They make laws and they subvert them. And you allow them. Such nonsense cannot happen anywhere. We are in the UK. Use Brexit as an example. It doesn't matter how many people right now can or wish to vote to remain. It doesn't matter. That time the referendum was conducted, a majority said we want to leave Europe. Is that not correct? That very decision must be respected. That is why Europeans are far more smarter than we are. They recognize the importance of law. If you subvert this one now, who knows what might be subverted later on and the consequences of the likely effect on the people. In Nigeria, they made a law that says if you don't have any YX certificate, you cannot run. If you're born outside Nigeria, you cannot run. It is in the constitution of the country. But here you have one dead man in Saudi Arabia. And somebody born in Cameroon born for office. And you see how our people are came behind them, fighting us because of Fulani people. Fulani that brought headsmen to kill us. Did Atiku ever condemn Fulani headsmen attack on our people? Did PDP ever come out to condemn? Of course, I give credit to Bukola Saraki, in all fairness. He tried. Have you ever had them come out before to say in categorical terms that what is happening is not good? Why is Dasuki still in detention? Why is El Zagzagi still in detention? When court after court, session after session have ruled that these men must be freed. But black people in Africa will keep quiet. And because Onoyen kept quiet, the thing kept coming until they swallowed him up. But had Onoyen stood up, during my time to say, you must obey court order. Do you think Jubril and the cabal will have the guts to remove him? Because he would have succeeded in stopping this very problem right from the beginning. Simple common sense. They said they have PhD, but they know nothing upstairs. Because they took Unam, the cannon, nobody said anything. They took Dasuki, nobody said anything. They took El Zagzagi, nobody said anything. You are not going to achieve. Why can't they come for you? Who are you? Are you accepting what I'm telling you this evening? You see, when I preach, they tell me that I insult black people a lot. I said I'm black. My father is black. My mother is black. My grandparents are black. I hate self-pity. I said it in England. I told them, I don't believe in racism. If I apply for a job, you don't give me. If I don't like it, I go back to my country and build it. They allowed all this nonsense to continue. And all they could do is to go and raise Igbo kids born in Kanu and in Lagos, perhaps under the bridge in Lagos somewhere. To be attacking IPUB that gave them everything that they are today. The, the little respect and dignity they have is because of IPUB. What is wrong in opening Calabar Seaport? Can somebody tell me? What is wrong in opening Igbocha Seaport? What is wrong with an Igbo man being the president of Nigeria? Is there anything wrong with it? But look at how we are begging. Like, uh, I, I can't even, it's so shameful. You claim you're a Nigerian with equal stake in Nigeria. But you cannot run for the president of the country. Is there any apartheid worse than that one? And what did Ohaneze do is to look at those who are fighting for the liberation to hand them over to the enemy. 
I remember that um, Nyanwood insulted me at Anambra House of Assembly because of um, Obiano, isn't it? Because of the boycott. That's why they came to kill me. Today, what did Obiano say about Nyanwood? What did he call him? Idiotic. It is nemesis. You see an evil man, an evil governor, very proud that full of people are killing his people. An evil boy somewhere, perhaps in. Where's that place Zeke was born? Zungel. I am sorry. But if you don't go to the village and fetch water in the village stream, if you don't play at night, if you don't do rain dance in the village, if you don't go hunting for grasshoppers, if you don't go hunting for squirrels, believe me, you're not one of us. Because it teaches you something. To love that very land the way you love your life. I'm walking on Uru Bridge in Lagos. All you see is concrete. You don't know anything. In their next life, they will not strike. Is anybody here in doubt as to where Tiku comes from? No. They think they are smart. If you continue, you will see many more references and instances regarding Atiku and how this is all on Google, not me, please. Regarding how he became a Nigerian. I was only trying to infer that if referendum is good for Damawa people, so it should be for Biafrans as well. So that they... The word referendum is not strange to Nigeria. They might as well invoke something called doctrine of necessity. If everybody in the zoo called Nigeria we are to boycott elections on Saturday in two weeks time Nigeria will be a brand new country you won't recognize it anymore they will be forced to invoke the doctrine of necessity to do the right thing for everybody but you allow them to get away with murder that is why they bring them to our land they announce pattern dance to cover the whole of the federation but they are focusing in our land killing us and you see Igbo governors like uh, Ibazo welcoming them come come and kill them more ordinary Uchoga as an abatia by the beans I can swear to myself he's in APC he visited in Nintu as a Nintu in Aba our people gave him the usual treatment he went and called the army to kill our people he's not even a governor yet and those who don't know my history with P2B, I will tell you. Is anybody who was in Abga in those days here? Do you know me in Abga? I was the Abga chairman in the UK and in the whole of Europe. I fought for P2B to be elected. I demonstrated. I wrote countless petitions. I put pressure on the British government to put pressure on Obasanjo to allow P2B's mandate to be respected. Some of you don't know that. Did I campaign for Biana or not? The first time around, live on Radio Biafra, I campaigned for Biana. So don't tell me any nonsense about being into politics. I have campaigned for them. Did anything change? Did anything change? No. Some people are saying it's our turn. B2B is our brother. I agree. He's our brother, yes. Not minding what, I'm, what happened at Isu River. But he, what is this thing now that B2B will give us that Nandasigo did not give us? Do you know who is Mwafuri? Some of you. Do you know he was head of state for some time? You know Aguirre Ronsi, my uncle. You know him? How about a poem? What did they do for us? What did they do for us? 
there is a saying because I grew up in the village where I come from. Is that not correct? This one we've been trotting on this road almost 50 times. There is no progress. If Jonathan, who answers our name, our own brother, Ebele Chukwaziki, we could not build Second Niger Bridge, who will? Did Jubril build it? I'm sorry to say, I said, no, I had like a, no, I won't go that far. Let me leave it. There is a saying where we come from also. Are you following me? Of course. Do you understand what I said? Yes. Eh? Yes. No matter how much the school fees, no matter what it is, it's uncle. Because your own is your own, our own is our own. Is that not correct? Nigeria is their own. Biafra is. It looks very, very difficult and almost impossible to accomplish. As somebody said, it looks impossible until it is done. If they tell you that the whole of the zoo will be vibrating because of IPUB, will you believe it 10 years ago? Huh? because we are holding them in a very bad place, I assure you. In a very bad place. Only if we remain resolute, uncompromisingly strong, will we accomplish what we are looking for. Any sign of weakness and our enemies will divide us and they will march us into the ground. We can't afford to do that. I remember I went home 2015 when I told everyone I was coming back home. Now I'm in the UK. They're saying, why are you in the UK? Come back home. And I said, when I was back home, what did you do? You know, these days they use photoshopped pictures to try to claim that people went out to see Jubril. Is that correct? Did you see any of our rallies back home in 2017? Did you see any of our rallies? Did you see Pulabia? Sure. Did you see when we went to, what's that place in Anisha we went to? Not on ball. Not even a glare. Every tiny school we went to after four hours only. Omaba. I went to Obi, but in New Water. The traffic was there for 12 hours. No, the whole of New Water, River State, entire River State. No vehicle moving for 12 hours. Because Abba is, uh, you, you, don't, you don't mention Abba because nothing happened that very Sunday in the whole of Abba. That is how strong we are. And I want our people listening all over the world to remain very strong. Don't allow yourselves to be distracted by these people that have no hope. Isn't it funny that it was only when the students threatened boycott that they allowed teachers to go back to class? Is that correct? Eh? I thought they said that boycott doesn't work. Article boycotted presidential election. Is that correct? So did Jubril. Did anybody hold them to account for it? Because Fulani runs everything. I said this thing before, and I'll say it again. I want to ponder over it very seriously. You are hated. They hate you. Nigeria only tolerates you. They despise you. You can never please them. Do you know that the Northerners wanted to leave Nigeria? Are you aware of that? Who made them to stay? Nam Ezekiel was begging them to stay. He considered the prime ministership to MPC so there'll be peace. He had this utopian idea of this beautiful African continent full of black people migrating with their goats, their cows, and their sheep all over the place. A utopia that never reflected reality anywhere in history. And because of that, we are here today. I read a very interesting post, something I used to talk about many years ago. Do you know our sisters are not getting married back home? How many of you know that? If your sister gets married, you even throw your own private party. Am I lying? Am I lying? Am I lying? 
Am I lying? Not that we don't have men. They are either in the dust dunes of the Sahara Desert, at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea, trying to cross into Europe, or they're in prison, heaven knows where around the world. If we continue this way, our way of life, our people, our trace, our culture will disappear forever and ever. So what IPUB is doing concerns each and everybody here. Some of our kids are born in England. If in America we are to go out and bring back a Mexican girl, I'm going to ask him to, to do her away. How about if the girl wants to look at Mexico? Church, I was a Are you feeling what I'm saying? There's that beautiful name called Ahamifle. Do you remember it? We are lost as a people. And only IPAB can save you. Nothing, nobody else has the metal or the balls to pursue this very fight to the bitter end, if need be. Only IPAB. All the nonsense they're doing back home, harassing us, trying to get us to not to pay attention to what we are doing will fail. They failed before and they will fail again and again and again. Yeah. Saturday, coming Saturday is a referendum for us. And this is the best time to do it. Because they are dangling a bait in front of us vice presidency if you're very myopic you will think we've never had it before but equipment was vp is that not correct three years to equipment taking over the same evil man dead man now Buhari, removed him today Buhari is no more they brought to jibreel I don't want to give you an express what I'm going to do on Thursday with Jibril. You wait for that very day. The same thing I did tonight, I'm going to do then. I will get people to actually confirm themselves that they, that thing there, you see there, is not Everybody knows. I remember speaking to, to some experts in Israel that said it is your responsibility and that of Nigerians to expose Jibril. No world government will do it for you, it's impossible. But because Yoruba wants presidency in 2023, because nobody wants to give IPOB credit, that is the reason why they will never ever accept that Buhari is dead. Never. So that uh, so uh, then and Namdekan will be proven right? No. The same thing they did with us in Anambra elections that we boycotted. 97% boycott successful they ganged up and said oh instead of us to give them credit please all of you should agree let's give it to Obiano and they were all settled all of them that's why nobody went to court can you imagine election in Anambra state where nobody nobody went to court in Anambra is that possible that tells you all you need to know about what is happening in the zoo and our need to counter it I have given all these people some, how can I put it, uh, some assignment this evening. This is for the Efulefus in PDP, the Irats. I know who is remote controlling them. Very soon I will, I will release his name. When was Atiku born 1946? Where is the birthplace of Atiku? They will tell it is in Adamawa not elsewhere. Atik was born 1946 in Adama, which, which means that his own part of Adama was never a part of Nigeria. Cameroon. He was born in Adamawa, the northern Cameroon. At the time of his birth, what nationality was he? By the constitution of the zoo called Nigeria, if you're born outside, can you contest for the presidency?
truthfully speaking, Atiku was not born in Nigeria, and I don't begrudge him. Today, he is a Nigerian. All I'm asking for is that same process that made it possible for Atiku to obtain green passport. Let them make it possible for us to go into the land of Biafra. Fairness, that's what we're asking for. And let me tell you something. For those asking us to vote in BDP and Atiku, let me tell you something that you do not know. Once the oil assets of the tree is sold, as they are planning to do, Biafra will never come again. Do you know why? Because you not only have Fulani to contend with and the irritating uh, Yoruba media, you have a superpower. Because the people that will buy it now must come from a very powerful country, isn't it? How do you think they're then going to allow you to become independent? Do you know what they've done to us? Do you know how many places we've been to and they've said no to us? Before we go there, the zoo lobbies will be there before us. Is that everything that I tell you? Most consultants around the world, when I was recruiting them to work for IPOB, said no, we'll not work for you. Because anybody that works for you, the Nigerian government will deploy every weapon in their arsenal against that very person and their country. Some of you have forgotten that Satlink was bought over in Israel because of Radio Biafra. Are you aware of that? Of course. You think they're going to keep quiet? They have nowhere else to go to. Every Fulani is flooding into the zoo called Nigeria. Heavily, they're everywhere. I know here we are now. We're saying it and everybody's keeping quiet as if nothing is happening. You know, we be our friends, we are like the our brothers, the Jews. People, we are doing exactly what we are doing in the 1800s, in the early 1900s. The Jews in the diaspora did not listen. Some said we are finding we are having fun in Europe. Others saying, after all, we are now the prime minister in Austria. Everything is going very well. He took the slaughter of six million people for them to go back to the land that God gave to them. And sometimes I get this very funny feeling that the same thing will happen to us. We have this very laid back attitude. We don't think about tomorrow or what might become of us. Anywhere we go to, we settle down and say, here, we have arrived. We are part of this. To the point that a once very proud race, the proudest in the whole of Africa, untouched and unmatched in any sphere of life, we are number one in everything. The first medical doctor, the first lawyer, in the whole of Africa, I'm not talking about you. The first people to defeat a European power, an Igbo man, in Haiti, defeated the army of Napoleon and they couldn't believe it that this nigger could strategize in war to defeat the European army. That is why Haiti is suffering till this very day, that punishment. If you don't know, let me tell you. We love freedom because we are born with freedom. Anybody who is against IPOB, I stake everything I have. Onya was that me. There is no genuine son or daughter of Biafra land that doesn't love freedom. None. That is who we are. That is why we are the only people that... Do, does anybody else have autonomous community? Apart from Asadibo land? Nobody. Some of you don't know that every blessed year we are conducting referendum inside our land, but you don't know that. Anytime they give your community autonomy, which means you have to go and look for Eze, isn't it? Or Igwe. Do we fight over it? Do we go to war over it? That's who we are. Freedom. If you don't want to be part of this Afaruku family and you want to go, bye bye. In fact, we even come to the party. That is who we are because we love freedom and we cherish it. 
Why, therefore, are Igbo politicians not campaigning for us to be free? I will tell you why. Because all their masters, Ogahani, is there any Igbo political godfather? No, you answer me. I'm asking you now. Any one of them? What you hear is Babangida boys, Abasanjo boys, Atiku. Even now, they have Atiku boys. Oh, you're not feeling what is happening back home. Oh, Tinubu, you never have Tinubu. Tinubu boys as well. After all, then we held down for Tinubu and begged him to make him a governor in our land. These are the people you call elites. These are the leaders you're talking about. That is why when you go close to them, Fulani will lose respect for you. Because that is their boy that he will kneel down and they will put turban around his head. He works for them. You don't know that? Any discussions you have with them ends up in the north. These are the people that are presiding over your affairs. And that is why a great number of us are abroad. Did you see the list of the police commissioners they brought out the other day? Did you see it? Yes. How many of them are from Igbo land? Southeast. Somebody said they went to school. IPOB came out agitating, only having conducting rallies and uh, distributing flyers and leaflets. As an Igbo boy, born near a slaughterhouse, maybe in Zamfara, because your name is Chined, you've never been to the village. Fortunately for you, you stumbled upon second hand techno phone, opened a Facebook account. And you heard there's a campaign going on and some people have boycotted you started to write rubbish against your own people let me ask you this question my dear pdp irat in your wildest dreams the way you're carrying on about atiku and buhari do you think full and boys who can pay for the woman like that Shameless bastards they are. Can you imagine? These are graduates without jobs. So, killing themselves over to full of the men. That had no degree. I think he only has a diploma. Not a degree. Ask them to do the same thing for more they will not do it. For their own kind, they will never do it. Or is it the lies that they told us about Abga? There is a Juku's party. Is our party, or you used to be, so to speak? Have you ever heard before a governor in a particular party campaigning for the opponents of their own party? Have you heard of that before? Have you heard of that before? These are the same men that could not speak to Buhari when he was alive, when Nimbo was attacked in Enugu State. Ukwani was crying like a baby. He called. Asorok, they banged the phone. He said, he told the people to start praying. But when it came to Nam, they cannot. I actually went to go and see them at the Enugu government house. They asked the army to come and kill me. And you asked them, what did I do? He wants to bring us freedom and we don't like it. These are some of the people you call elites. You're in one party company for another person. When I told Mordo, let's boycott an Ambra election, he said no. Look at the nonsense we ended up with. Today he's telling us if you don't vote for Buhari, we will kill you in our own land. The same Buhari that killed us during the war. Killed us in 2015, 16, 17. Is the man you're saying that if you don't vote for him, kill the person in our own land? Do you see how stupid we have? Do you see how sad our lives truly really are today? And why IPOB is more important now than ever in the lives of our people. So if you are one of those recruited in the engineer data, Does anybody have the map of Adamawa State here? 
before 1961. For your information, Cameroon used to belong to the Germans. Are you aware of that? After Germany lost the Second World War, 1945-46, they divided it between France and Britain. So in actual fact, that part used to belong to Germany before. Did anybody see the video of the Lamido of Adamawa speaking very proudly about his uh, Cameroon roots? Do you see your average lazy youth in the zoo? How twisted they are, man. You have a man saying this is where we come from, we're from Cameroon. And you're saying, no, you're not from Cameroon. I don't understand. You, I, I, if you ask me a question now, where are you from? I'll turn from this I'm for Rupi Big. Then you turn around and tell me, no, you're not from there. Does that make any sense to anybody? That is exactly what is happening in the zoo. Because the ridicule is very easy. We learned this many, many years ago in 1995, 1996, here in England, 97. Yoruba media. If you're telling them something or pointing out their error, there's, oh, look at your shirt. It's not properly ironed. Something completely different from what you're asking them. I told somebody that I think it's from the group. He said, come back here and leave the boycott. What has the two got to do? That is what they're doing to us today. You give them facts and figures and they twist it and they come around and they start writing rubbish. And uh, there, I was told that somebody wrote something in Canada. There's, uh, I don't know, this uh, Canadian-based journalist. Is that, is that a journalist? That I entered a deal with, with uh, he's a job seeker in Canada. Entered a deal with um, APC, and it reminds me of what jihadists used to do. You know, when they bombed US and when they bombed Israel, you ask them, they say, "Oh no, it was Israel that sponsored the terrorists that bombed them." You've heard of that before. So I will invite Ami to come to my house to kill me and kill my people. The, the, these people are so stupid. So you're only saying it because I stopped attacking Jubril. And I'll tell you, because you're IPB, I'll tell you the whole world. Police escort. These are mad people. I stopped the expose on Jubril because some people thought we are stupid. They will sit down. The last bill that came for IPM was $86,000 to get all these people to come into Israel. And I asked them, who is going to pay the same IPOB you want? You sit down in your house, IPOB will fund all these things and then you walk into the presidency and answer the president. You do your own battles yourself. That's all. Because I thought we were stupid. They knew that Buhari was dead long time ago. They couldn't come out to say it because they're afraid of IPUB now. That's that's why out of anger is thought. But on Thursday, I will I'll do what you do. Do you want one Nigeria? Because if you want one Nigeria, you can vote. If you vote for one Nigeria, you will reap what you sow. The consequences are there. If you're going to a plan, if somebody's telling you to go and vote, please, I beg you, travel from Okigwe towards Ogwinenugu. I want you to go past Lord Banta. You see what awaits you. Be if you're traveling from our nation into Night Mile, before you get to Night Mile, look on the right hand side, you will see the new settlements bringing up. Mod Fulani Hausa houses. You don't know that? Go to a back they speak Hebrew more than you do. Are you aware of that? Ebony is almost gone. Gone, completely gone. 
and this was the same way that they came claiming they're fighting corruption. How do you think Fulani defeated that was happening? How? I'm asking you, how? They said they have come to fight. Eh? They came to fight corruption. Fulani convinced local Awasa people to rise up against their own kings. And today they are gone. Gone and gone forever and ever. The same thing they did was what one Yoruba man called Afonja did. And they lost Kwara. That is what Umahi is doing. Ugwanyi is doing. All your governors, that's what they're doing. And before you know it, our land is gone. If you doubt me, please, I beg you, travel for a keep on express road. Once you get to Lopa, you will spend three hours. There is no express. You know, express has a, uh, has a, a tarmac on top of it. Tarmac? There's no. They dug everything up. Everywhere. Do you, there is something some of you don't know also. In every major town or within 40 kilometers of, 40 kilometers of every major town in the in Biafra land, there is an army barracks. Do you know that? You don't know. They have encircled us. All they have been doing all this while is to provoke IPOB. So we go into war prematurely. And then Nianwood and the governors will help them to take over our land. When they came to my house with two fighter jets and two helicopter gunships, for one person, for one person, they came to my house. What they wanted to do was to dare me to kill any of them. They would bomb my village. That's number one. And number two, they will start killing our people in the north. Do you know what will happen then? Niamwode will say, we told you so. He's bringing war here. So you don't know? So you don't know that? That was what they planned. Go and listen to OKZ. As his statement was very clearly made. That we saved lives in the north. So we are the ones who are expendable. And what is the crime of IPOB trying to set our people free? That is our only crime. Nothing more, nothing less. That is why we must remain very strong and very, very resolute. The foolishness of these people, one minute we are working for APC, one minute we are working for PDP, depending on who we are attacking. And our job is to attack all of them. To attack all of them. It is open and water. The truth must be spoken. Some people don't know this, but it must be spoken. And here on this very platform, we speak it without fear before anybody. I won't go you. Somebody who asked me a question last week, and they twisted it. Oh, why he, you know, you know, you know, why he ran away and left his supporters? I laughed at them. And I said to them, if you stand in front of, you know, you know, you know, fever, those that command traffic. If you stand in front of a yellow fever man and call him a madman, then I will respect you. I didn't say Buhari. Before he died, they are hitman. I had nothing, and they are afraid of me. Imagine when I acquire guns and weapons, what will happen to this? When I, when I went to USA, when was it? When, they, when I asked them to give me arms, was it 2015? 2014. I asked them then to give me weapons. You know, Mandy and Nathan Hamburg and America. Uh, they refused. As soon as they started killing us, as soon as the headsmen came and started to slaughter us, they started saying, uh, IPOB should go and fight for us. And I asked them, with what? We are now signing our own death warrant one after the other. You know, the funniest thing about the things I say on Radio Biafra is this. It has a very funny way of happening. When I say it, it happens. It may take a while, but eventually it does come to pass. These people are very clever. If they give power, they said power will stay in the north eight years, return to the south for eight years. That's what they claim. They arranged. But if a ticket takes over, the power will be in the north for how many years?
I remember when I was in prison, the talk was when we blocked head bridge for four days. They said, they give them presidency, please. Give them presidency. It's about time. It was evil men. Every leader you have in Igbo land, be it in the House of Senate, House of Reps, or Haneze, whatever, was appointed by Fulani people. I, I, I said that a while ago, didn't I? Nobody believed me. Now they have divided on Haneze into two. Ucho Kuku is heading one. Ucho Kuku is a traitor. Ucho Kuku stood up in a court of law in Abuja to testify against Thomas Regan. Do you know that? Ucho Kuku they now raised him to go and fight in Niawodo. And I said to Niawodo, I told you so. The same people he was serving are now fighting him. So a full and a man can just wake up one morning and decide to divide the people into four into five into six. Do you know why? Because he appointed the senators, the house of reps, your governors. They are all in their pocket. They do as they tell them. Is it making sense now to all of you? How many of you saw the video of this idiot going to Asarok? You will shed tears. No more Niawode in Ohaneze. Peze is now factionalized. Because they know he's an evil man. He your uncle going to They fall apart. It has happened, hasn't it? No amount of presidency will save each and every one of you. Was Jonathan not a president? Was Jonathan not a president for goodness sake? Any difference in your lives? If Jonathan as the president did not make any difference, what makes you think that Peter will be as the vice and the son? Eh? What has the super done for you, my people? <laughs> what has the thing about my preaching is that I preach and I lecture, I teach. So that because we are, what made IPOB to survive is because we are very reasonable people. It is only a Biafran you will tell something, he or she will go home, think about it and come back and say, you are right to oh, that thing you are saying. Not the rest of them. Because they have this pathological hatred for our people. In Israel, I used to speak to the politicians in Israel. I used to say to them, when they ask me, how are you sure that uh, Igbo, Biafra is hated to Israel? I said, the same things you're going through is what we go through. People hate us for no reason because we are good at what we do. For no reason. If you ask a Yoruba person, why do you hate an Igbo man? They couldn't possibly tell you. The same thing with Aousa Fulani. And it, it did not start today. Did it start today? That's why I hate Zeke. After Zeke must have heard what Ahmadu Bello said in their so-called new one Nigeria about Igbo people, you still went ahead to form government. It's, it's unbelievable. The same thing they are doing today in our land. But I'm sure now that the uh, world has woken up to see that all along I was right. That thing I saw sitting down, maybe in a bunker. He has now seen from on top of um, Milk in Hill. He has now seen it. Political parties can never solve your problem in the zoo because they don't know how to run an economy. It is not in the DNA of Fulani people to run a progressive, viable economy. Never. Ever, ever. This is Radio Biafra for joining us from wherever you I hope the whole world is listening. Is that correct? Yes. We are slightly unorthodox, as we say all the time, but we must continue. They said there's this um, jihadi thing going all over the place about the Islamic um, group in Nigeria. How many of you here know that Atiku is an Islamist? How many of you here know that? Do you know what I find shocking and disturbing about our people? Exactly this time, four years ago, the grace was anybody but Jonathan. Let Jonathan go. Let, let, true or false? True or false?
true or false? I'm asking you. Four years later, is a vote out Buhari. You think I'm stupid? Let us get rid of that system that produces all these Nikon books from time to time. Collapse the entire system and start all over again is very simple. Boycott the elections, the whole thing collapses completely and totally. Then you have a proper constituent assembly because the northerners they have inbuilt majority in the house. Inbuilt, you can never change anything through politics. Never. You don't know that. And they say, oh, "What? Well, uh, you can vote. Everything you do is through voting." But there are four-year-olds who are registered voters in Kenya. Niger people are coming to campaign with them. They've asked them that people from Niger and Northern Cameroon and Chad, they can come and vote. Are you going to count the votes there? Are you going to count it? Unbelievable. 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 What is the passing to us? Fulani, June and all. All of you. Even some people here in this very hall. What they have done to our psyche is to damage us. And I thank you for the for IPUB. Because they have seen a semblance of cohesion, of togetherness, of a sense of purpose and of direction. That is why they're against us. That a little child bearing an evil name born somewhere that I wouldn't want to remember, will rise up and say, if you keep talking about boycott, uh, I will tell them to bring up a champagne dance. Madness. And they claim that they are educated, all of them. They claim they went to school. They see what is happening in the place. There are no good roads, no good hospitals, no electricity. Year after year after year after year after year for nearly 50 something years. And you think that if you go on Saturday and you vote, somehow all that problem will disappear. Is it going to disappear on Saturday? So if you're looking for somebody to cure your problem, is you don't have full man to cure it for you. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Have you circulated this very paper on, on Sharia in the north? And what they are doing about it? About Nigeria's the Abuja Declaration. How many of you here have read it? The Islamic religion in Abuja. It's still, we found it. It's still online to be circulated after this. The, the original one, they've removed it? Yeah. Do you know that Bola Tinubu is a Muslim? Are you sure you know? I thought they are your Yoruba friends. I have a genuine Yoruba friend. Femi Fanika Ede is a good man. Do, do you see how he's the only one standing? Have you noticed? The only one standing. And I believe he has... Um, a Biafran blood from somewhere. I don't think he's completely Yoruba, to be honest with you. I don't think so. Do you see what they have done to Fayoshe? Do you hear about him anymore? Do you hear about my good friend Fayoshe anymore? No, you won't. Because things are happening, very terrible things are happening. That is why this IPOB here in London must continue what you're doing. Make sure we replicate what I'm seeing here all across the UK. Very, very important. I know that London is the very center. Everybody is here. Everybody comes around London. But I want this replicated everywhere. Because from what I see about London IPOB, if we are like this everywhere else, I don't think it will take us two months for, a for us to get Biafra. I can tell you that. Because our problem started in England, it will also end in England.
if you're in doubt before this very evening as to why I said what I said last week Saturday I believe we have cleared it now isn't it have we not cleared it and perhaps we got Atiku into even more trouble but the truth must be spoken because I swore to speak the truth always even if it leads to my death that is my oath before heaven and before this very earth before Chukwokika Biyama I will speak the truth always and there is nothing anybody can do about that. We got information that some pastors in Biafra land have collected money claiming that I have told them that they should go and vote. I am telling you tonight that that is a lie. A complete lie. Anybody who challenges what I say will end up in disgrace. If in doubt, ask Niamwood or Mbaka. They will tell you. What I preach is the gospel of heaven. Then I'm going to raise you complete and utter truth. In IPOB, I hide nothing from this very great family. You are very, very you are too important. All over the world, the talk is of IPOB. Everywhere you go to is IPOB. Everywhere you go to is IPOB. Because we are very, very special. We are the children of light. Without us, Africa will remain poor forever and ever. Have you seen South Africa these days? Huh? South Africa is fast becoming like Nigeria now. Don't you know that? You don't know? We are the only hope of Africa. Biafra is the only hope, in fact, for every black man on the face of this very world. So I tell those fighting against IPAB, fighting against the resolution of Biafra, please, you're doing yourself a great disservice. Because Biafra is actually fighting for liberation as well. We don't want anybody's land. We don't want anybody's resources. All we are asking for is to be left alone, to worship Chukwukika Biyama in the land of our ancestors, as our ancestors did before the white man came. That all honor and glory may belong to Chukwukika Biyama, now and forever. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please give number. Give ten people first. Before any other person will come up, I would like to call on uh, UK National Coordinator Marze Justice Okachi to speak first before every other person. Biafra, I think you've been sleeping. Biafra, freedom. Biafra, freedom. freedom. Biafra. You see, um, it's a great pleasure to see you for the first time, and also for gracing this occasion with all our members here. I must confess that this is not all the UK IPOB family. This is just a sample. And by God's grace, there'll be a bigger gathering where all the other zones who are just as enthusiastic will join in an occasion such as this. But we really must give our Heavenly Father, um, who had made it possible for us to witness this occasion today. I haven't thanked you, I must thank a Deputy, who has always been supportive. And not only that, every, because I know uh, time is fast spent. I'm going to say.
say thank you to every been directed and really speaks through one man <laughs> um, I'm really grateful to be here today it's a great honor and privilege uh, we're not only people here those in the DOS have been supporting us all our brothers and sisters throughout the planet and those who are listening including those who are not opportune to hear what we're doing now live but will hear it at a later time so may the Almighty God bless everyone. I think it's been said about why we have to boycott the election. I, I came across this piece of information that um, you wouldn't believe it, that 50 years ago, in the heat of the Biafra Nigerian War, one of our sons suggested United Nations Security Council that one of the ways of resolving the Nigerian Biafran crisis would be to ask the opinion of those people who are fighting the war. Whether they want to remain Biafrans or Nigerians, it's really simple. What do the people want? So Namde Azikiwe, guess which month? February. Guess which day? 16th. Guess which year? 69. 50 years to this date. He asked 50 years ago, he asked for plebiscite to ask the planet to allow the Biafrans to decide whether they want to remain in Nigeria or not. This has not been answered. So those of you who are in a position to actually conclude this particular request, which is this election coming on the 16th of February 2019, 50 years later, all you have to do, as at the time there was war on, there was no blockade, there was blockade, there was air raid, there was just artillery shelling and all sorts of things. You're not asked to go into the battle for front. You're asked to just sit inside. Uh, um, need that. Can they eat a food with us? Well, because um, I, I'm trying to be a bit biased uh, from a wooly bone cream. Just in case those who are, you know, want to eat a food on that day, maybe, maybe they'll be allowed. Just sit inside. Enjoy your food. You're not asked to go to the battlefield. You're not asked to go inside a bunker. Just stay indoors. Why? We try voting before. We've done it for over 50 years. Nothing has changed. Okay? Even if you voted, even if you voted, your vote does not count. I saw on the war once in the UK. They wrote on the war, if voting changed anything, they will have abolished it. Yeah, a graffiti on the wall. If voting changed anything, they would have abolished it. If you think Nigeria know that your voting is going to get you Biafra, do you think they let you vote? So why are you voting? Sit at home, enjoy yourself, and you have a, a dramatic change in our lives. It will imply going to school, a proper school, it imply having hospitals, it imply having good roads where people don't die prematurely. It imply running our lives. Not what you were told in the parrot 12 days after independence, that we will not let you have control over your lives. This is an opportunity for us to have control over our lives by staying indoors and not voting. It's really that simple. So I'm really grateful for that strategy because if we do that you could infer that those who came to watch as they flew in into Abuja airport named after Nanda Zikiwe they remember that he asked for referendum for these people they're coming to, to observe their voting he asked for referendum 50 years earlier and if it was carried out we would not be in this mess so I urge you, tell everybody you know at home, don't go out and get killed by voting.
stay indoors, enjoy your favorite before Kazi has been mandated. And God bless you all. All hail Biafra. Please, I want to appeal to each and every one of us. Your question must surely be directed to the referendum. If you know that very thing that has been bothering you, why you think we should not boycott the forthcoming election? Ask our leader. Yes. Uh, Please. Also, I can allow them to can ask about anything. It could be anything. Just leave them. If referendum, anything at all. I'll ask. help you, Afro. I'll help you, Afro. I don't do. Um, I'm so. I'm so much. I mean, I don't know the best word to express my euphoria just standing in front of you this moment. Thanking Almighty Chupuokike for his gracious work towards us to save you, your life. And the metal he gave to you, the tenacity to endure the wickedness of the dangers of the evil. And only him in infinite mercy spared you and take you away from the menace of his enemies. And today, we are blessed to be in front of you. I want to say all praise, all thanks, adoration and might be to Almighty God. In the mighty name of Yeshua Hamashiach, we pray. Now, Elbow Director, your voice was what just woke me up and I began to follow. And up till now, you have not deviated. And your consistency gave me that spirit to follow. My direct question to you is this, just to say to you. Due to the super hands that are lobbying against Biafra all over the world, does it mean that our efforts is not going to go through? All help you. Okay. You will not believe it, honestly speaking. The people that I thought were the most ardent enemies of Biafra are now speaking our language. I was surprised and shocked when it occurred to me that our non-violent stance will actually stand us in good stead. Because somebody said to me that this your matter will be looked into because you are not violent. And it came from shockingly unexpected quarters, I can assure you. So we are making tremendous progress, but I'm not at liberty, of course, to divulge every detail, every minutiae of discussions we've had. But we are moving in the right direction, because if not, the zoo will not be in a sort of panic right now, will they? So that tells you all you need to know. Thank you. Good evening to the Athens Worldwide. Uh, good evening, London, and to the four. I was glad to see you back together in London, the tag team. <laughs> <laughs> My question is um, concerning Adipo. Um, Adamawe, in the 19th century, before Nigeria was created, where was Adamawe? It was in the Cameroons in the uh, in the they had their own um, empire. What's it called again? The Adamawa Emirate was founded by a Fulani jihadist. As a matter of fact, in the Cameroons, if yes, I'm not mistaken, before, German. Before, before the colonialists came and created one Nigeria, yes. and you had the German wars. Yes. Wasn't Adamawa part of Sudan? My goodness. 
Sudan. And wasn't Adam away the, it, it, part of the Sokoto Caliphate? It was. What was Sokoto Caliphate? It was Sudan. Sudan, yes, that's true. Before, in the 19th century. It was. It, that's in the 1800s. Yes. 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 So we keep going back to this Sudan. No I wonder thought, they went there to do something. You have Sudan on the left and Sudan on the right. You have that's Israel, true. <laughs> and so maybe it's the strategy to bring the Sudanese. That's correct. I yeah. have the map for you can see later. I know. I know. Okay. I brought it with me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That that tells you that that's the. Let me tell people something they don't know. Whilst we are not allowed to fly out direct from Igbocha International Airport, from Ivune Nugu, from Calabar, do you know that every mushroom airport in the north they have direct flight outside the zoo? Even KB, ordinary KB. Do you know they, they actually receive direct flights from abroad, but not us? And you're telling me to go and vote. In the area. Please. Director. Thank you. I'm very glad to meet you. Thank you very much. Yes, I thank God for all you've been doing for us. I thank God for keeping you alive. It's been a terrible struggle whereby they almost killed you. And I, you know, I was so almost in tears, you know, because it's like without you, the struggle seems over. Because you just, you know, you're, you're very passionate for us to get Biafra. You're honest, you're against corruption, all the things that the, the zoo government supports. Corruption, you're against. Even what the British government is quietly not reporting it, anything about uh, what they're doing to us in Biafra land. B British government do not report it. And um, well, as I say again, we thank God that you're back with us. You know, I'm really happy. Yeah. Another thing I want to say is that I know fully well that you want to go back to zoo country. Yes, I will. But um, I'm so terrified because, as you know, zoo, Nigeria is a zoo. They are lawless. They don't know the meaning of law. They don't obey any law. Anything goes in Nigeria. They don't have maintenance culture. No roads, no light, no water. The petroleum oil spillage that Shell caused, there's no, they are not addressing the issue. No government is addressing that issue in the so-called zoo government. Yes. And that is the problem we are having. So, as they say, God helps those who help themselves. We have to stick together as IPOB. Yes, we all have to contribute to make sure that we get this Biafra. But I'm scared of you going, when you're going, we have many saboteurs also who are Igbo, of Igbo origin, who claim to be IPOB even up till now, who want to sabotage everything. And don't I'll want simply to see. give them, you know, the baby saboteurs. I just came feeding bottle with milk in it. I think um, they'll be sucking the feeding bottle and they'll forget what they're supposed to do. So don't worry about that. We'll take care of it. Okay. I can assure you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. That, that, thank you. That, that's something our sister said, which is very important. Oil spillage in Ogoni land. Can you remember how many times they flagged off the cleanup? Every week they flag it off. And what I find shocking is this. Even some people, of course, are going to let her change because um, the zoo army, maybe the god intelligence I was going to go to Ogoni. Ogoni was prepared to receive me before they attacked my house on the 14th of September of 2017. The cleanup hasn't been done. But people from Ogoni land, I'm sure some might be tempted to go out to vote. What concerns me most about this voting is the money they will bring that very day. They will bring money to try to entice you. Once you go outside and you accept the money, you're finished. You are completely gone and finished. Think of Ogoni. Ken Seruwa abandoned Biafra and joined the zoo. It was that same zoo that killed him. Please, you must learn from history. Go ahead. Good, good evening. Um, 
uh, and a special greeting to the director himself in animal sense. We, we go a little bit way back. Now, uh, the issue uh, of Biafra is one that um, I don't know how to put it into words. It's a, it's a very major issue. I see all of us here as, as um, refugees, and I think we will continue. I see myself as a refugee. Of course, of course, that's what we are. And we have a very uh, the point I made earlier the la at our last meeting is the fact that I, I believe we'll have somebody made a comment about the superpowers that are, or the powers, let me just put it this way, that are against Biafra. I think in a, we have also a, a, an ally in the, the leader of, of the USA now. Um, I know somehow passionately uh, he, he has a cause in hand i think we i don't know he how... does but i'll tell you there's a sorry okay. to, to cut you short no, that's no. a problem there emeka nyoku is well respected all over the world i'm sure you know that mm -hmm. highly respected and so also a few other people like ngozo konji well and the rest of them yeah because when they go to all those meetings that you're talking about and somebody from trump's administration asks them what do you say about this Biafra? Oh, leave them. They don't understand what they are doing. Leave them. We want Nigeria. I was at, I was at uh, near Wodo's house when a, a very important man came in. I won't tell you who he is. A white man. And asked him, what do you want? He said they want a restructured Nigeria. And I'm telling you this now. That was the dispatch the American ambassador sent back to Trump. That instead of Biafra, let them have a kind of autonomy, a Biafra within Nigeria. I'm just giving you classified information. So that is the official government, US government policy towards us that we should be free, but within Nigeria, because that is what America and Yoko and others have been tell them. That's what we should do. Yeah. Sorry, just please go ahead. Okay, yeah. I think my own point, I, I'm pleased that you've pointed it out, but I think that in this life, we only have one life to live. We can speak for our own selves, direct to the person. And Give, we are doing that. Thank we you. are doing that. All hail Biafra. All hail Biafra. All hail. My supreme leader, I thank you so much. My deputy, thank you so much. Um, um, I'm here tonight always begging our Supreme Leader he said all of us he mandated everybody go home and help our villagers wherever you come to get Radio Biafra when I heard him say that I begin to shake. I call my deputy and said, this is what our Supreme Leader said. What should I do? He tell me what can I, what do I want to do? I said, I want to donate a transmitter. And I did. Yes. And I asked him again, what can I do again? Because it's not enough. He said to me, where do you come from? I said, Abia not. Old Bende, Omaha province, where our supreme leader comes from. That I want that radio to be talking to our people. And this night, as our supreme leader is broadcasting, my people is here. Wonderful. I called my deputy again and said, Please, my deputy, can I come back again and beg my brother? Anybody here from Old Ben, Old Omwahe, Abia, not senatorial zone as the zoo have named us. Please indicate yourself. I want to take your names. We have a project. We want our radio to be broadcasting 247. Not sometimes it will broadcast. Sometimes it will not. They will start calling our deputy. We want our lady is not talking. Our lady is not talking. We want to put 
uh, uh, solar so that this radio will be broadcast in 247. Please, I want anybody from Omoa here, province, like I've said, to see me. This is, I'm just a messenger. I was asked to do it. We have a supervisor who is supervising this project, which is our law, Lone Nyanya. So don't be afraid to uh, help. Abia State is, is the center of darkness at the moment. Please, my brothers, anybody from our these places I've called, please see me. I thank you all, great dear friends. Thank my Supreme much. Leader, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. And I would like anybody here who is in a position to emulate our brother to please try and do so. The more we have the means to reach our people in our various towns and villages, the better for us because there is the only way we can defeat our enemies. Very, very important, please, that we try and emulate what the people of Abiyan are doing. You know? Thank you very much. Oh, hell, Biafra. My name is Nkechi Bojono, and I'm from Isukwato. I'm delighted to see you, Nyindu. I've been watching your broadcast through the media, and I can really see the hand of God upon your life. I grew up in the northern part of Nigeria, I knew all we've went through. On daily basis, we're being chased around. Even because I was in the boarding school. All the time, we, we run away from the boarding house. We run into the bushes because I school at Joe's. We'll be scattered, hiding ourselves in the bush. When we come back as well in Zaria, that's in Kaduna State, where my parents are. The same thing. Most of the times, they rescue us and hide us in the um, um, barracks. I knew what I faced from my childhood until we left 1987, when we now, my father now went back to, to the East. We suffered enough in the North. And then when I saw God brought you up as a leader to rescue us from the hand of this zoo, and I turned watching, I said, ah, I know what Igbos are. In me, I would say, ah. I've seen so many people rise up to be leaders. Let me just watch and see if this one is truly from God. As a Christian, I kept on praying and I kept on believing and trusting in God. And each time I prayed, I could see God behind you and I could see the hand of God with you upon your life. Oyendu, I am grateful to God who have raised you up to be a leader to lead your children the children of God out of darkness. Just, there was a day we were debating at my workplace among the Yorubans. They said, oh, Igbos, we know them. That's how they come out and talk, blah, blah, blah. And before you know it, they use money to buy a boat. I said, to be honest with you, the hand of God is upon him. He's not going to, to deny his people. And then I said to them as well, they begin to say, oh, the churches, that's why the pastors, ah, that's why they say, oh, why have God not used them to show visions? I said, let me tell you, he is from God. He is from God. That God have raised him up like he raised Elijah, like he raised Moses. He speak with authority. You could see the power of God upon him. Onyendu, I am grateful to God. The God who has anointed you and have elected you to lead us out of these people from the hand of the zoo. The God's hands will not depart from you. His glory will continue to shine upon you. He will cover you in the palm of his hands. We're backing you up in prayers. The hand of God will continue to direct you and God will continue to order your steps. Your going out and your coming in shall be ordered by God. May the hands of God continue to be upon you as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. When we started this very race, I knew that without Chukoki Kabiyama, we're not going anywhere. I knew it from day one. I knew it. I went to Israel to pray, and it was confirmed. Biafra is in the gift of Elohim to give, not in the gift of man. Because he brought us there for a purpose. He blessed us for a purpose. And it is left to this very generation to fulfill the promise of God upon our lives. And we must do it. We must do it. Because there's no alternative. 
IPOB, one family. May I use this opportunity to remind each and every one of us. The people in Biafra land, our brothers and sisters are observing it at home consistently. Let me remind us that we have got the permit to protest in front of BBC on Friday. Since, uh, since they don't want to report our news, we are going in front of BBC to tell them that the people, the people contesting for the PDP, for the APC, they are foreigners. Once again, we have got the permit to go to BBC and do what? Peaceful protests. We put to the, to them to shame. So this very, this very protest, we have to congregate in front of Oxford Circles Station by 11 o'clock. Then we march to BBC. In front of BBC, where we're going to stay to do the protest. So when you are coming, please bring out your torch. Bring your torch. Because that very place they write Biafra. Even if it's dark, we have to find it out. I'll be happy! I'll help you, Afra. I'll help you, Afra. I'll be happy. My name is uh, Justina Ivoma Shellen. And uh, the Shellen that I am um, answering. Is the is from my husband's name. Is um, I want to let you people know that um, I love my brothers, and Shelling is from Adamawa State. Even though I'm married, uh, I'm not from Adamawa State. I still love my people. My I love my people. My people know that I love them. Even for. Over 40 years I've been living in this country. I visit my parents, I visit my sisters and my, um, my nephews and nieces, wherever they are, more than people who live even in Nigeria. I love my people. And my husband too, my experience from uh, being married to a man from Adamawa City is that there is a lot of division there. My husband, if you call him an Alsa man, if he has a knife, he will kill you because he doesn't want to be called an Alsa man. They have their own tribes and there is so much discrimination they suffer there if you are not an Alsa or Fulani. My husband was in the military. He suffered a lot of discrimination because one, he's not a Muslim, he's, uh, his own people, um are from this equa the the um, the equa the sudan interior mission it was called sudan interior mission so if you are not a fulani and you are not a muslim and you are in the military or police you will suffer discrimination despite that there are other little little things they suffer which i observed too which even at at one time I was, I was uh, tended to, I tended to tell him, why can't you become a Muslim then so you can get promotion? Because even people who cannot read and write, they will, they will just be having accelerated promotion above, above those of them who are Christians. So that is a uh, bad, uh, bad one. And uh, I want to now let you people know that I was in Biafra, in Biafra, I was about 16 or 17 years old uh, when the first Biafra war was fought. I volunteered in uh, various uh, capacities. We were, as very young girls, we used to work in the kitchens at Aba, frying uh, um, plant, uh, plantain and uh, yam that they used to send to the soldiers in the, in the war front. I worked in the Red Cross at uh, General Hospital about helping to, yeah, helping to 
but it's important to me as well because I want to let uh, our leader Nandi know about it. Um, I worked in uh, the General Hospital as a Red Cross uh, member helping uh, wounded uh, Biafran soldiers. I worked as, um, as young as I was, I worked in the admin office of uh, the Biafran um, Air Force at uh, Ikenazizi. And those of you who know Ikenazizi, you should remember that there was a time an air base was there. I worked there and I worked at Oga when uh, Oga was there as well. Okay. So my question, uh, well, <laughs> I watched um, the attack in uh, our leader's uh, house, live in YouTube, on the very day and very hour it was happening. And I cried and I prayed for his life. Because his house and my sister's house, his, uh, my, my senior sister is married in his uh, village. And his house, his father's house, is just next to my sister's uh, house. So, by what I saw that day, I thought everybody, including Nandi, has the spirit because I watched it like. But as I'm since then, I've been crying in my mind and praying, please, God, wherever Nandi is, please save me. And I was very happy, and I glorified God that Nandi finally appeared and is alive. And I've also... Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I haven't asked my question. I haven't asked my question. I haven't asked my question. And um... <laughs> yeah, okay, the question. <laughs> so my question now is, because I've been speaking to a lot of people back home, and... Uh, they don't seem to be on the side of Namdi. And most of them, and they are young men that I expect them to be supporting Namdi. And what they are saying is that Namdi has big mouth, Namdi has bad mouth, and all kinds of things they have been saying. And I know what advice I have been giving to them. So my question today is uh, Namdi, uh, our leader, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to be in front of you today. I want to ask, um, so many people, professors in the, the so-called groups, Ali Boy Development, uh, this, this, and all that. Um, well, your all groups, I don't know their name. A lot of them, I have heard them in the, in the internet saying that they must vote. People must go and vote because they need Buhari to be just out of office. And these are people who are pro, pro IPOC. And now they are, they are now saying that the Igbo should, uh, should be encouraged to go and vote so that Buhari should be removed. So I want because if Buhari is not just out of the office, that there is nothing uh, Biafra can achieve. There is nothing Igbos can achieve. So I want you to put a little light into that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as I said before, on Facebook and many other social media platforms, there are people who are pretending to be Biafrans, answering Igbo names, but they are not. And as I also said earlier, if you have any difficulties with the truth, then the problem lies with you. If there's anything I've said before that is not the truth, please come out and say it. But if what I'm saying is the truth, then you must concede to IPOB and that what we are doing is correct. As I said earlier, I have sworn to speak the truth always, regardless of the consequences, and that's what I continue to do. I will never ever change. Amen. Come and talk. Amen. Call John Lagini. Thank you very much. Next person, please. One family. If you watch, you will be going to open. 
we are so many here and some of us are speaking to our director for the first time please do not take the time of others allow others to speak as well two minutes please all help you from all help you from director um, we are so pleased to see you today thank you very some much some of us have not seen you for the first time in fact so we are so much uh, glad to see you uh, you have given us courage very many of us that have been traveling from one country to another looking for chasing for a place a greener pasture uh, we've been trying to see if there is a way we could come home come closer home but due to the condition uh, we find ourselves home we find it very difficult to be there I have a, a question to ask you. Very many of us are very much concerned of your security. During the time you were having interview in Israel, there was a question, there was something you said and I just picked it, picked it up. When you were trying to narrate how the, the, the zoo army came to your house and the interviewer asked you, now you, are, you see yourself in Israel, are you excited? Are you excited? That's the question he asked you. You answered, you said, um, not really excited, but I'm relieved that you, you, you believe that you have come to a country that is, um, that is more secure, that's, that's what you said. That you could have come to London, but you thought that you were not safe. That's what, that was your answer. So my question now, Director, is this. Do you think that you are really safe in this country? Do you think that you are really safe in this country? Uh, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your question. Anybody who is surrounded by this amount of people must feel safe, whatever yeah. you may be. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here, Biafra. Biafra, IPOB, in fact, one family it should be. I join all of us here to thank Chukwokika Biyama for the safety of our Supreme Leader Nandi Kalum. In fact, many of us have been there for a long time to see him face to face. We heard all sorts of things about him and depends on the individual you decide based on what you see. Now, when my wife and I came to this London Forum, we were so pleased with what we saw when our Supreme Leader said that we are whiter than white and whiter than snow, believe me that is true because we saw it on our first day here under the chairmanship and leadership of Mazi Uzoka. Now, my Supreme Leader, the question I need to ask is, as a Biafra War veteran, I must say I've shared my view of my experience here in this forum many times. My first war location, I was 17 at the time, was Amausa Nekede. We were armed with my friend, my four, facing the enemy who we are equipped with modern, in fact, according to the expert, the weapon they had was superior to that used in the Second World War. And we had only McCray and Mac 4. The internal magazine can only take four bullets. And in that my first four location, I was given only six bullets.
we were trained and taught how to feed five bullets into the Mark III or Mark IV. And that was what happened. But neither to say, we suffered heavy casualty on that, on that first experience. However, as the war progressed and we liberated Oweri, we were then redeployed, redeployed at Imerewe, from Imerewe to OBK, from OBK to Port Harcourt Actress. Now, on our first day, we were a brief us to recapture a lele one. But we were suitably armed with Biafra made armor carrying vehicle. And in that one operation, we captured LL1, LL2, LL3, and we moved on to Oslo. Believe me, if we were just a fraction armed with the arms the Nigerians had, they would not have defeated us. And what we Biafra achieved in that war, we started to manufacture our own weapons. As I said, the supporting weapon we used in that protocol as operation was made by Biafra. And believe me, thank you. It was made by Biafra, and because our homemade weapons had to be maintained as our territory strength. We couldn't get the pass to maintain them. But after that operation, our armor carrying vehicle was withdrawn to another location where it was needed. Now, my Supreme Leader, my question is this. We all know that Britain, for example, will not let Biafra go. And we know why. And we know that Nigeria will not let Biafra go. And we know why. There's no need to go into that. But what I want to know, what I want to be assured, my Supreme Leader, I may not get the answer right now because I believe that you and your the leadership of IPOB are doing everything to make sure that we realize Biafra. And that question is to, because we know that the people, there are a lot of people, enemies out there who will not want us to go. And in the first instance, they brought war to us because we succeeded. And they are likely to do the same. We don't want war. We want to gain Biafra freely. But believe me, independence is not given freely. So when the inevitable comes from, we must be prepared. My Supreme Leader, I know you and your other leaders are doing a lot for us. We appreciate it and we thank you, Kokama, for your wisdom in pursuing this struggle. I may not, I may not decide to say to have, to have the answer now, but what I'm saying is let us be prepared should they bring war unto us again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I said that we will not march unless we are fully equipped and ready. I also said that any day we commence our march, we will be in Sokoto within two weeks. That's what I said. And I mean what I am saying. If they leave us the only option to mean war, then that is what they will get. We're not going to be peaceful forever. You know that very well. They've been killing us. There will come a time when when we begin to retaliate, nobody will blame us. That time is coming. Those that grew up in the village, you will understand what I'm saying. That time is coming. And when it comes, the world will know. And I can assure you, we can never lose again. We will never ever lose again. Yes, thank you so much, my leader. In fact, it's an honor and the privilege to stand before you. I must tell you, I admire you so much. I'm more than happy to see you in person. This is my first time of seeing you, and I'm more than happy to see you, sir. Uh, earlier, during your broadcast, I know we are still broadcasting, 
I heard you mention that if other zone in I mean, zone in the UK are doing well, we are here, that the Biafra would have been achieved, <laughs> used months, which is quite flattering, but I wish that would have been the case. But before I say that, my leader, I just want to assure you that um, when I heard your voice, because I was in UK here, I never heard you during the time you've been broadcasting. But why? Well, when you were arrested in Nigeria, then I came to know you. And when I heard your voice, honestly speaking, I was, in fact, I was convinced that there was the Spirit of God in you, that you are God sent. I can assure you this because I'm a Christian myself. And for you to come on air to talk about Sabbath or even talk about the Ten Commandments of God is something beyond men. You can only have the discernment of Spirit of God in you to speak about these two things. And that's why I know that's the Spirit of God in you. And everything you've said on air, even right here, they are all truth, my leader. And I must urge you, never you change course. The way you plan it, that's how Biafra will be restored. I can tell you this because I am fully a believer on that. So based on the issue what we raised here, my leader, also I've heard you also a time ago when you talked about or perhaps how UK is coming like fourth on the financial aspect of uh, things in the world. And it's quite, you know, kind of worrying when you look at it that we use pounds here, which is bigger than dollar, bigger than euros and stuff. So you wonder why can or how come UK is coming forth? Honestly, I live in Oxfordshire. I have to come from there to here for this meeting. And in our record, or perhaps in the HOD record, it will appear that Oxford has a family. Whereas, uh, yes, we have a coordinator in Oxford, but it's just one person. We don't have family there. It has not been inaugurated. My leader, uh, based on what you said earlier, I'm just making this kind of contribution or a kind of recommendation to you to have a kind of system you have in America where we can have a, like a zonal coordinator and have a unit coordinator under them. You can have like even regional, if you look at it that way, so that it can be easily managed. UK is big, of course you lived here. I mean, for a national coordinator to travel Scotland, Wales and all the rest of them, it's a very big job. And that's why resources are needed to do this thing. So I, I, I'm appealing to you to look into the fact of us having zonal coordinator, having unit coordinator under them. Like for instance, in London, which is a county, we can have about three units in London and have one zonal coordinator. It will be easy for that zonal coordinator to monitor other units. For instance, in, in Oxford, where I'm from, I'm honestly speaking, I know a lot of people people there. Somebody is here, he came with me, he can be a witness to this. They are willing to come to meet him, but it's sort of many of them, they're not opportune enough to travel down here or to come here. You know how much it is to even take a train to come here. So my leader, please look into it. If we can have Zuno coordinators, they can be able to manage the zones and we will get enough people and people can contribute. We need finance in this era, you know, struggle. Please, my leader, I'll give way to others. But this is my appeal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sure. Where is um, where is Doctor Justice? He's still around, isn't he? Our national coordinator. Is here. I think you've taken note of what he said. Oh, her Biafra. IPOB. One family. I cannot do reason. London family, all the executives, please can you step forward? I thank our leader, our leader from London. I am a spoon leader, Mazam Nandi, and we deputy, we national, and so on and so forth. Our leader, our, our prayer, I've been that. Lead us to be our friend. Our leader, the London IPOB, London IPOB is Nairabia. Without we receiving your blessing, and also we 
appreciating your blessing. For that reason, London IPOB is not to give me well and you are You have been doing well for IPOB all over the world. We will sing for our leader. They do not expect our leader to dance. I, I do not forget all the time he said it. I will, he will only dance when we actualize Biafra. Let me make this thing very clear to each and every one of us. Our leader is here. I've told you all, I've told us that our leader knows whatever that is going on in London. Not only London, everywhere in the world. He's too intelligent. Because not too at that time on Europe. When is he open? That was a question our leader asked me on Saturday about a somebody which I don't want to mention the name. And I explained all the good faces here. Don't think that our leader is not seeing me. Most especially when we are dancing on Facebook. Onyendu, <laughs> uh, London IPOB. Before we present and before we go on, uh, is the Secretary of State still here? No. Uh, I want to call on UK National Coordinator Mass Justice Lukachi. And also our Deputy Director. Because all of them family member here. UK Gavia. Deputy Daily, if I need us who look at Yes. Uh, Can we have one house, please? Oh, hey, Biafra. 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 Freedom. We are blessed because we are at home with our leader. The servant of God, and all the spirit of the old ones have been preserved. I can assure you. Uh, this is uh, our family meeting. And I'm very much happy that uh, the London coordinator of the business our UK national is here, and then also all of you. Uh, but of course, there are ways we do things, there are protocols, and I will want to uh, use this opportunity to ask for your permission to hand over this microphone to the UK. Biafra! 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 Why do you have to repeat this? Can you perceive it? Biafra! Biafra! That's how great I am. When you see courage is contagious, you can see what's happening. Our lioness is on. Our lioness is on. It's clear. Words are enough to be expressed. I'm not going to come to a meeting, but we volunteer to do that. And you can see the response. Uh, those who have been hiding in the loft are coming out. <laughs> those who have been, <laughs> we've we'll come out from the, underneath the bedroom and things like that. Rapidly. But now, those in the loft are coming down, those in the attic are finding their way out. So, I can't thank you enough for coming. So, now, whatever is in this box, which I'm going to ask that London Zulu um, coordinator on behalf of the present to you personally is never going to be enough. But nothing does it. It um, doesn't matter what we do, it doesn't matter what we say, just accept the kind of 
Please me. <laughs> Make sure you see the book. So without further ado, please. Okay. IPOB One Family.
Mechuko Kikabiyama, who creates heaven and earth, the God of Namde Kano, the God of Biafra, the God of IPOD all over the world, Chekwebegu, Ukwa Mampogu, Yaneje Jenabata Bata, the blessing, Epelene Epelani, seven times each day. On behalf of London IPOB, I want to present this to you. Now, what you do, I rap with a one young. accept this it is an honor and a unique privilege for me and i will tell the london family why this is very very important to me all the trophies and awards that i was given when my home was stormed on the 14th of september 2017 i lost all of them that we are taken to government house to be given to a KZ person. But I have returned to London to my base. And this family here have gone a very long way in trying to replenish what has been lost. The same way that I have received this very trophy this very day. The same way that I lost them and London have replaced them is how our sovereignty that was stolen will be restored by Chuko Kikadema Premier. <laughs> what is written here is very deep. It is too deep that I have to give it to myself. You have to forgive me. It's a very big title, you know. Let me do this honor because of Uzoka here and my deputy who is standing in front of me and also our national coordinator. It is in recognition of my steadfastness in Biafra restoration struggle and may Chuko Kika Biyama continue to guide me and my family. It was presented to me by the IPOB London family. This will be the first of the replenished things that I have lost. Chuko Kika Biyama will bless this family in London. Chuko Kikabiyama will bless IPOB in the UK. Yeah. Chuko Kikabiyama will bless IPOB in Europe. Yeah. Chuko Kikabiyama will bless this worldwide family. Yeah. Have I let you down before? No. Mm -hmm. Have I let you down before? No. Mm -hmm. I will never ever ever let you down. I made a pledge before Chuko Kikabiyama. Any day I will contemplate doing anything that will bring Biafra disgrace or shame. Any day I think about going back on this very effort, Chuko Kikabiyama will kill me and kill my family.
because I never ever sent myself. I never wanted to do this. I don't know who I'm I never wanted to do it. Chukwu Kikabiyama said, I must, if I don't do it, it will make me go mad here in England. I told Uche, Uche said I should go ahead. Where's Karomonde? People underestimate her a lot. I, I can tell you tonight, all of you, that without this woman, we won't be where we are today. She sacrificed a lot and contributed a lot to ensure that this very family stands the way it is today. We never abandon our own. And on Saturday, we will tell the whole world that we own their family. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to plead to us. No. Security men, please get ready. 